let us take a look at another option for position. So here, notice what we have done. Everything is just the same as before, except we are now saying position equals dodge. Okay, so we've seen stack where the individual uh, sub bars are stacked one on top of the other. We've seen identity where all the sub bars start from the same, same level. Now we are seeing dodge where each sub bar is plotted to the side of the other sub bars. Okay, so this is sort of, uh, you might have seen such, such an option in Excel. So now for each cut, there are many bars, not just one bar but there are multiple bars with each level of clarity having its own separate bar. Okay, so this is also a good option provided you don't have too many options of clarity. It's a good thing because all of them start from the same level and there's no problem of overlapping or obscuring, one bar obscuring the other bar. So it becomes very easy for us to make comparisons between bars of different heights, clarities, Dif uh, b across the different cuts, right? So because everything is starting from the bottom, so you can say, okay, there are many more of this here than there are here. They are of the same color and so on. So this, th that's what position dodge help. But of course, dodge is not very useful if you don't have, uh, if you have too many values of the fill, you know, like you've got, this itself already is pretty high. Uh, it becomes difficult because the bars become very thin. Uh, it becomes difficult. But if the val number of values here is not too many, then it becomes a really useful option. Uh, and I would actually prefer that over the identity or the stack options because of ease of comparison. Another big issue with, uh, in general, is also a matter of position, is called overplotting. Okay, now if you looked at the number of data items in this particular data set, MPG data set, Okay, I think it has about 300 odd rows. I'm not 100% sure at this point, but it has 300 odd rows. But clearly, there are not that many points here. Okay, so out of 234, only 126 points are actually visible here. The other points are not visible. Although we know that for a scatter plot, every single point should be plotted, so long as the data is not missing. And in this case, no data is missing. So we should be seeing 234 points, but we are not seeing, we are seeing only 126. That is because they have measured displacement and mileage and so on at certain fractions of one. Not all the values are taken there. So for example, they have rounded off every value in the whole data set to I think the nearest quarter or the nearest half. Okay. So because of that, many points are actually over plotted, meaning it is possible that right here, there might be two or three points sitting underneath. And what we are seeing is only the last point because all the, the displacement and highway values are exactly the same for many of them. So there is overplotting. Okay. So uh, when you suspect that there is overplotting, you have some options. You can do this thing called position equals jitter. Right. So this is our original plot with overplotting. And if you do this option of position equals jitter, Right? Jittering, you can see that jittering means the thing is shaking a little bit. So what R is going to do, ggplot is going to do, is to add a little bit random, a little bit of a random value to both the x and the y coordinates. Okay, So it's not going to plot the points exactly as they are in the data set. It's going to move them by a very small factor, by not by a lot that it's misleading. It's going to jitter them around by a little bit and then you start seeing more data now. Okay, so here there was overplotting. Here, uh, almost all the overplotting has been removed because it's very unlikely that for two points the system is generating the same amount of random jitter. That's extremely, extremely unlikely. So now we are seeing more points. In fact, we should be seeing all the points in this plot. Okay, so jittering is one way to overcome this problem of overplotting. Okay, so you can do, and it's it's covered under under jitter. I mean, under position because it actually is a result of saying position equals jitter, just like saying position equals stack, position equals identity. So here we are saying position equals jitter. Okay, so jitter adds random noise to separate out the points. Okay, but given that this is a common thing to do, after all, when we are dealing with large data sets we would expect this overplotting to happen quite a lot. 
And because it's such a common thing, they've created a separate geom for it, right? So geom point position equals to jitter is exactly the same thing as just saying geom jitter, okay? So geom jitter is just like geom point for making scatter plot, except that every point will be automatically jittered by a small quantity. Okay, so now let's take a look at this data set here. What is the problem with the following plot? How can you improve it? Okay, so here we are plotting uh, highway mileage versus city mileage. Okay, and it is again because of the way in which the data has been rounded off to the nearest quarter, I think. Uh, there is a lot of over plotting and you can see that this is clearly not 200 plus points. So clearly we know what the solution is. Solution is position equals jitter or geom jitter. Okay, so if you said geom jitter, you would get this. This is revealing so many points that are hidden in this case. Okay, so again, this is part of how the points are positioned and therefore it's part of the position topic.